Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. You can use the gradient editor to create a new gradient, edit a preset gradient, or delete a gradient. You can also modify the existing gradients, blending more colors that you like into the existing gradients. You can click the gradient sample that appears in the options bar after selecting the gradient tool in the tools palette to launch the gradient editor dialog box or click edit in the options bar. So after we have the gradient tool selected, we can go up here and click to edit the gradient or simply click edit. And then we have the gradient editor dialog box as we see here. Now to create a new gradient based on one of the preset gradients, you click on the preset gradient that you wish to use as your sample. You'll see the gradient used in the preset display at the bottom of the gradient editor dialog box. You can create your gradient in this area. First, you can type a name for your new gradient into the name text box. You see that right here. We'll leave it as custom for right now. Now after that, you can select if you want your gradient to be solid or have noise by selecting your choice from the gradient type drop-down. Let's first look at a solid gradient. If you select solid, first you can select the smoothness of the entire gradient using the smoothness drop-down and then using the slider to change that value. Now at that point, you create your gradient by manipulating what's called the color stops and opacity stops as well as the midpoints on the sample gradient that's displayed just below that. The color stops determine what colors will display in the gradient. You can click on the bottom row of color stops to add a new color stop. That's just below that right here. So you can just click anywhere on there to create a new color stop. Now you can create a color stop but you can also delete one. To delete one you click on it and then simply click delete in the bottom right hand corner of the dialog box. To edit a color in the color stop, let's add one back in, you can click on that color stop to select it and then click the color drop down at the bottom of the dialog box right here. You can select foreground or background or user color here. Now if you want to set a new color then you click the color sample instead of the drop down arrow. So we'll click that. And that will launch our color picker that we've seen before where you can select a new color for the color stop. We'll go ahead and select one and then say OK. Now note that if you want to change the position of the color stop in the gradient you can click and drag it to slide it to a new location on the color stops bar. Just simply click and drag it wherever you want it to go. So you can see you have a lot of flexibility here with your color stops. Now also note that when you click on a color stop you'll see a small gray diamond appear located right here and that's the color midpoint and it determines where the color changes between the various color stops in the color stops bar. So if I add another one this is the midway point now between those two color stops. So you can cl also click and drag these color midpoint diamonds to new locations on the color stops bar to change where the colors shift between the two color stops. So first, let's change this color to a nice green. Then we can click on the diamond and drag that along and change the midpoint. Now, if you'd like to add transparency to a gradient, then you must change the opacity stops at the top of the bar of the gradient sample, right above it. So you can add and remove opacity stops in the same way that you add color stops. Just click into there and you'll create one. Of course you can delete them by clicking on them to select them and then clicking the delete button. Now if you wish to change the opacity level of an opacity stop, 
then you click it let's add one back in and then in the stops area below you click the opacity drop down and change the opacity percentage as needed right now it's set at 47 we'll just increase that up to 95 now this can add various transparent and opaque gradient areas to the gradient if desired when the gradient looks the way that you'd like you just click the new button to save the gradient as a new preset gradient for future use if you don't want to save it just click OK to go use the selected gradient in the background now if you selected the noise gradient type from the drop down then we have a few more choices and you'll create a gradient that contains randomly distributed colors within the color range that you specify you first set what's called the roughness of the gradient using the slider provided right here and the higher the number the more color striations that you'll see and the lower the fewer then you use the three color sliders below to change the possible color range used for the gradient right down here and of course using the color model you can change that from RGB to HSB whatever you like and back again now to the right of that you can check to restrict colors right here to prevent the colors from oversaturating and you can also check the add transparency checkbox to add transparency to the gradient if so desired now once you have the settings the way you like you can click the randomize button to reproduce a new gradient sample with the settings that you specify however when the gradient sample looks the way you would like it to look you can either click the new button to save it as a new preset or just click OK to apply the gradient with the gradient tool. We'll click OK and we'll click into our selection, click and drag, and we'll see the new gradient that we created. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.